Today's going to be fun. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Titanium PowerBook uh, G4. I've got mine here. Move my keyboard and mouse out of the way. Look, an iPod. I wonder what that's for. Um, this was the laptop that I took to college. It's a one gigahertz, one gigabyte of RAM model. Titanium PowerBook G4, first came out in 2001. This is a 2002 model. And, um, you know, they're definitely a little, a little fragile, but I am a, uh, I'm a big fan. So you can see here, I'm gonna watch it boot up. Uh, yeah, this one is in very good shape, which I'm thankful for. You can also see all the googly eyes over there from the podcast-a-thon, which is very upsetting. This one hasn't lost much paint. The hinges are still in good shape. Uh, but the plan is to open this up today, and we're going to put this in it. So a couple people on Twitter were like, well, how are you going to put an SSD in a machine that uses IDE? Uh, well, OWC at least used to make, I've had this for years, uh, an SSD with that connector on it. So we're going to open this thing up and uh, and do that. So you can see here that it, uh, well, it works as long as it's plugged in. Wake that up again. So you can see that, uh, that it does work. Um, and it's running Tiger right now, and we can see here that it is a, uh, a one gigahertz, one gigabyte of RAM. The biggest, baddest PowerBook G4 Titanium there ever was. If you like this wallpaper, I have remastered them in 5K. They're on uh, 512 pixels. You can, you can find them there. Uh, so this machine does work. Uh, it had a couple of pretty, oh, I knocked my stream deck over. Uh, a couple of pretty good tricks. Sorry, Stream Deck. I just like blasted it off of its perch. Tiny, tiny trackpad. But if you want to upgrade some stuff, the keyboard popped over and you could update your memory there. This has some OWC RAM in it, PC 133-100. So not super fast, but it got the job done. Uh, there's also a little label here saying, don't touch that, that's hot. All of this was just exposed, which is pretty wild. Uh, and then you had a PCI slot on the side and the battery underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down. And down. TJ, if the Twitch app is busted, you can totally do it on the web. All right, so we'll let this thing shut down. I'm going to unplug it. And we are going to dive into this. So the plan today is to put this SSD in it and then install a Mac OS X Tiger off of an optical disc. So we'll be here a little while today, but I think that's gonna be, gonna be fun. Um, yes, for more info, uh, it was a 20 Max for 2020 machine. So here's the underside, how small the battery is. It just comes out really easily here. So you get the, the battery compartment. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They look like Torx, maybe T6 to come out. And I believe this bottom lip will just uh, will just come off. So we're gonna find out together. Put the battery over here. Uh, that it is an Apple battery. Yeah, it's probably original. So it is uh, doesn't really hold a charge. All right. So I've got my iFixit kit, my driver. And let's look for a bit. Let's try this one. That's too big. Oh, these may be smaller than I thought they were. All right, it's a T2, pretty small. All right, so we have 
this. I'm going to put my tools back away since my workspace isn't very big. going to try to keep things tidy today. Um, all right, so let's start taking some, some of these out. I haven't been inside a Titanium Power Book in a long time. They are relatively old school looking inside. I need a place to put these screws. Um, I'm going to very carefully put them up here in that groove on the desk. I think these are all the same length, but it's always important when you do something like this. I find it important to lay the screws out in the order that they came out of the machine in. So just in case they're slightly different lengths or different threading, which is pretty common on Apple notebooks, you can make sure they go back where they belong. Ooh, that one's tight. There we go. I don't want to round any of these out. Just take my time. Uh, I really like this iFixit repair kit. I just got it not too long ago. I was using like a hodgepodge of tools that were left over from my, really my Apple repair days. And it uh, spins around really nice. So you can have pressure on it with your index finger and turn with your other fingers. Um, yes, this is an Ikea table. It's got like metal legs and this pretty nice wooden top. And then, uh, as you can see here, I've got these on it, and then I've got an overhead rig. So when I shoot uh, from the overhead camera, um, I built a big rig on it. There's a, I think my 20, I guess in January, or January 2019, maybe, one of my tour, like studio tour videos on YouTube, I, um, I talked about it. Ooh, that one's really tight too. There we go. Let you guys see that angle. It's a new angle I'm trying, so I have a little tiny tripod in the corner. And uh, see what's going on there. So I'll take this last one out. All right. Yeah, I don't, I'm not dropping any frames, I don't think. I shouldn't be, not on this computer. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, the bottom Torx, the T2 out. So this panel should come off. I'll tell you what, before I get prying, I'm gonna get a black stick. It's a nylon tool here, so it's not conductive. Very useful repair tool. It's called a spudger. Anyways. Aren't there screws under the feet? I don't think so because it's missing two of the four and they're not screws under them. So we will see if this doesn't want to give, then I'll pull the other two feet off. But I'm just gonna explore a little bit. I think they've got tabs. It's got tabs under it. There we go. So you see, this is just a pretty thin, hello, hello. That's fun. Pretty thin piece of, piece of metal here. So the titanium was really built. It wasn't unibody. I mean, there's lots of frame parts in here. You can see all this magnesium frame that Apple used at the time, which would break if you drop one of these or drop an iBook, it would crack the magnesium frame. Um, but then this just goes on like this. The unibody machines are built the same way where everything is built into the top case and it's just a thin bottom case. The aluminum machines though that followed this were built into the bottom case and the top case came off, like the MacBook if you saw me take that apart. So I'm gonna set this aside. Set it back there so we don't hurt it. So a little tour of the inside of the Titanium Power Book. Here is the airport card and it has a little plug-in antenna, and I see that cable going basically all the way around the machine. And we've got a fan here that exhausts out the back and a fan that exhausts out the side. There's a vent on this side too, but I don't see a fan. Um, so it is, 
it looks pretty old school in here, doesn't it? Like when Apple doesn't use green logic boards anymore. You got a couple different things going on here. Um, you can see the hinges a little bit. They're really, really wimpy. There's really thin springs holding them together. And uh, I'll show you from this side, so you can maybe see it, um, see it a little bit, a little bit closer. That'll focus, there we go. So optical drive coming out the front. Here's the hard drive that I'm gonna replace, airport card, and then logic board. So, what we're gonna do is take this hard drive out. And it looks like it's got a couple of screws holding a bracket in. I see, all right, it's the same size, still a T2. So how this works, I think, is very similar. Apple mounted hard drives and notebooks the same way for a really long time, really until the unibody era, where they would have a channel like this. It looks like it's missing some of the parts. I think this has been opened before. Uh, so on this side, you would have rubber feet, and it would slot in. And then rubber feet would sit on this channel and then this cross member would sit down on the feet and hold it in. So it would have a little bit of, um, a little bit of uh, shock protection, if you will. And these are, these are 20 years old. They're not very, uh, they're not very squishy anymore, but you can see one of those, those rings there. So I'm gonna try to fish these out of here. Same thing with the optical drive. So how the hard drive goes in here, the optical drive goes in here. So this, there's a foot here, and it is for the optical drive to try to give it a little bit of um, shock protection and to keep vibration down. So just like in a car, you have body mounts. Like um, if you have a, like my truck is, a, is on, built on a frame, like an old school truck, and it has bushings, has body mounts that are big rubber chunks that sit in between the frame and the body to absorb vibration and, and impact. Same thought here. This hard drive is spinning and vibrating. This optical drive is spinning and vibrating. And to help keep that from being transferred to the case and to you, they would use these little grommets to help, uh, help with that. Um, all right, so this is a Toshiba drive, um, 100 gigabyte capacity. So the SSD is gonna be an upgrade to 120. So what we need to do is undo this ribbon cable here. And this should come out. And so the hard drive here has this protective covering to protect the electronics, because here is the trackpad. This cable says Foxconn on it, something else you don't really see in modern Apple hardware, the name of the vendor that put it together. And you can see that structure that the trackpad sits in. Kind of cool looking. All right, so we're going to take the wrapping off and these other grommets. It's got three of the four grommets. That's not too bad, I guess. Uh, here you can see the latch that releases the screen when you open it. And you can see what I mean by it. This is not unibody. This is a magnesium frame that screws to the top case here and here, and there's one down there. All right, so here is our drive. So it has... Yeah, it's definitely been tinkered with. Uh, we're gonna need to get these little mounting screws out. Also a T2. I like that, don't have to change bits very much today. Sometimes you get into this and you really have to uh, change out bits a lot and it really slows you down. So if you're just joining us, I some people just join, uh, A, be sure you're following the Twitch channel because I've got a lot of fun stuff coming up. Uh, in fact, some stuff is out for delivery today. That's going to be a video maybe next week, but probably between Christmas and New Year's doing a bunch of stuff here. Um, so be sure you're following. Uh, this is my one gigahertz titanium PowerBook G4 from 2002 machine I went to college with, and it is going to be one of the fastest G4s ever because I'm putting in an IDE 
SSD from OWC. Like I said, I've had this for years. I don't even know if this is good. We're going to find out. Uh, I bought this on a whim, thinking it'd be a fun project, and then I'm just uh, just doing it. I think it'd help if you zoomed in the overview. Yeah, let me do that for y'all. I've been continually tinkering with my setup, so let me um, do this live. Let me bring that in. get any bigger. There we go. All right, how's that? You're going to lose a little resolution, but I think it's uh, going to look a little bit better. Thank you for the suggestion. All right. I just got to remember to stay in frame. Okay, so we have the hard drive out. So let's open this thing. And I'll show you the trick that I use when replacing drives to make sure that you get all the casing and stuff on the right, the right, the right direction. So here's this. It weighs absolutely nothing. So it's the OWC Mercury Legacy Pro. Like I said, I bought this on a whim years ago and haven't done anything with it until today. So I'm gonna get rid of all this packaging. All right, so I've got my internal spinning drive. Let's set this aside. So they actually sit in the case like this. And these little T2s were on the lower edge. Put these in. So these cameras are 4K and they capture in 4K. I stream at 1080, but when I punch in like this, obviously we lose some of that resolution. I would like to eventually get a camera for the overhead shot that has a zoom on it that I could control, but that's down the road somewhere because I'm using Logitech Brio webcams right now, but they're 4K. Pretty happy with them. I think the color's pretty good and um, they're easy to use with Windows, but it's... Uh, you know, this is a growing channel all the time. So even though we don't have the electronics on this, I'm going to put this back on because I don't want the metal of this to touch any of the stuff that was on the underside of the trackpad. So even though I probably don't actually need this cover, I'm going to put it back. Also, if this machine ever gets a hard drive again, I'm going to want this part. All right, so we're going to put our sort of ridiculous IDE ribbon cable back on. Make sure that's seated evenly. Obviously, I don't want to bend any of the pins. All right, and we're going to put foot back on here and a foot back on here. Only has two, only has a few of them. Like I said, I think this has been opened before. In fact, I think the machine had a hard drive replacement at some point. Um, because that Toshiba drive I pulled out doesn't have an Apple logo on it, so I think it's been, been swapped. All right, so that's down in there. Put this cable back on. I'll tell you what, I'll do that in a second. So this rubber foot was just floating around in there, so I'm going to actually leave that one out. And we will put our little cover piece back on. So this is actually what screws down the drive. So it's mounted through holes on, well, just one because it's missing the screws. And then this is what holds it into place. So we'll put this back down. And do the top one. Just getting them snug, and I don't want to go wide on that because uh, that's plastic, and you could definitely crack it because this plastic gets hotter, hot and cool, hot and cool over time, and obviously I don't want to crack that that piece. All right, so let's get this let's get this cable back on. Let's 
Let's see. Do where I can actually see it. There we go. Got our ribbon cable back on. So now we see the new is joined with the old. Got that SSD there, airport card, etc. All right. So that looks pretty good. So like while we're here, just kind of, I'm gonna check out kind of all the other connectors, make sure everything's seated nicely. So you got capped on tape covering some of these, capped on tape covering this, which I believe, I actually don't know what this is. The connector doesn't really give me any clues. But this says danger and it's covered in cap tone, so I think this may be the power supply or like the inverter for the display here. Again, fans, itty bitty fan. Look at that little look at that little friend there. Boy, these machines get loud. Let me tell you. Okay. Uh, bottom case. Some people start machines up open like this to make sure it's good. This is just an SSD, so I feel pretty confident that I don't. I'm not going to take this apart again. Probably famous last words. So we're going to, this has kind of hooks in the front it's got to sit in. And then it comes down. There we go. So it sort of slides into place. And we'll put all these screws in. Turns out these screws were the same, all the same size. But like I said, it's really good when you're taking anything apart, not just a computer, but really anything, to lay the screws out either in the way that they came out. I've seen also some people, and I used to do this when I was doing repairs for a living, because you know, we would be deep into repair sometimes a few <clears throat> over a few days, is have an ice cube tray, a number, like with a Sharpie or a label maker, label each, I guess, pocket? I don't know what you call the little sections in the ice cube tray. But then do that and uh, keep a list of where the screws came out of or, you know, just as long as they're organized so you don't find yourself wondering what screw goes where or if you get to the end of it and you have an extra screw, then you can track down where it's supposed to go. And again, I'm not going real tight on these, just snug. Especially on an older machine, I don't want to over torque anything and damage it. So I'm just going back and checking them. That one looks good. This one came out at a little bit of an angle. So I'm gonna pay close attention to it going back in and make sure that I don't tear anything up. Yeah, it wants to go back in at an angle too, but it's threading, so. These are machine screws, so they're only gonna go in when they are in the right spot in the, spot in the thread. All right, get my battery. Turn it over. And let's see what we got. Should boot up to the flashing question mark. See what this does. So far, so good. No smoke came out. Great. Flashing question mark. So let's give it an operating system, shall we? So I have in here my. Mac OS 10, some paperwork about .Mac. There's an iWork 05. That's probably not supposed to be in there, but it's just in there. Then I have Welcome to Tiger. 
find out what you can do with Mac OS 10.4. Oh, we're looking through the innards right now. It's just, it was a CD in this book, and then an iWork 05 disc that doesn't belong in there. So we get Spotlight and Tiger. Uh, there was this old view in Spotlight that didn't last very long. Um, Spotlight and Finder, Spotlight and System Preferences. Dashboard. Dashboard zooms onto your desktop with the click of a mouse and like Exposé disappears just as quickly. You can use widgets to get up-to-date information, quickly look up contacts, check your stock portfolio, see what's playing in iTunes. Is that? The titanium could not play the ripple effect as uh, Egg Freckles points out, but the aluminum ones could. And my roommate had an aluminum one and I was jealous. So we have iChat AV. If you had a big external EyeSight camera, you could do audio chat, instant messaging, video chat. Of course, everything is very brushed metal. Safari RSS, so you could subscribe to RSS feeds in Safari, or you could read them in Safari. Safari doesn't do that anymore, which drives me crazy. If I need to look at an RSS feed, I have to do it in Chrome. Uh, display PDFs in the browser, private browsing, for all of your secret things. Uh, mail, which got hit by the ugly stick in Tiger. And lots more stuff. Dot Mac sync, so you could sync your iPod or a select number of phones. All sorts of stuff. QuickTime, works with Windows. Your Mac fits seamlessly into Windows networks, so you can share documents and printers with everyone. You can establish a secure connection to a Windows network over the internet and access Microsoft Exchange servers. We'll come back to this book. Let's get the install DVD. And we're going to put this in. The Titanium also was the last Apple notebook that could dual boot uh, OS 9 and OS 10, which is pretty cool. Let me zoom in this one too real quick. Forgive my arm. There we go. Yeah, Tiger was uh, $129. Very exciting. Uh, so, Mac Kilius, excuse me. Uh, if you were on Big Sur, I have heard reports that you cannot download previous versions of macOS from Big Sur. I don't know how widespread that is, but I've heard that. Uh, so I would try to download Catalina from a Catalina machine. I think that was going to be your best bet. And again, just fixing the stream on the stream. chat window fixed here. And I don't know why that is. They may um, they may be able to fix that at some point, but they haven't done it yet, which is a bummer. All right, so here we go. We're going to use English as our language. You can probably hear that optical drive. Preparing installation. Now I'm going to format this SSD real quick. So I'm going to go to Disk Utility up here at the top. Here, you guys want to hear that optical drive go? gathering disk information. I, I really hope this SSD shows up. Or it's going to be an embarrassing end of the video. Uh, 
I'm just making sure the chat shows back up on all these screens. I changed the, there we go. Still gathering disk information. Please work. It's got the beach ball. No, we're running off a DVD on an old system, so I'm just gonna give it a little more time. If this didn't work, then I'll just read you the rest of the Welcome to Tiger book and pretend this never happened. The SSD is 120 gigabytes. So it, it'll, it should be seen by the machine. So you can't do these things in advance. It's not like, oh, I finished this power book earlier like a cooking show, you gotta do it live. Let's see, I'm getting nervous too. Uh, so this laptop came from a listener. I may have misspoken earlier. I used a titanium gigahertz in college, not this specific unit. This came from a, a listener of Connected. The one I have, I have seen, I saw it maybe five or six years ago and it had been destroyed by the person who used it after me. Mm -hmm. Getting nervous. This is why you don't do repairs in front of people. Zap the PRAM. That's actually not a bad idea. If it wasn't frozen. All right, let's zap the PRAM. This is going nowhere fast. All right, so we're gonna do command option P and R. Hi, Mike. Give it one more. Come on. All right, we're gonna boot from CD. All right, so we're booting from CD now. Uh, the keyboard feels pretty good still. I mean, it's a little flimsy because it opens, but in, uh, some key travel, it's pretty good. Give you some optical drive. <laughs> All right, we're going to use English. Utilities. Okay, well, let's go to System Profiler. See if it sees, a, sees a, anything there. So it's not gonna be serial ATA, obviously. It's gonna be regular ATA. All right, so System Profiler sees it. That's good news. May have been the PRAM reset. Let's go disk utility. Fingers crossed.
Well, this is exciting. System profiler saw it. The SSD is not formatted, so it should just see it as a blank disk. If it doesn't, I don't know if I have anything else that I could easily format it with, Ex like externally, and then put it back in. Come on. Hmm. If you haven't followed the channel and you like content like this, where repair goes terribly wrong, I'm your guy. Uh, do you have one of those OWC multi-plug disc adapters? I did at some point. I don't know if I still do. Wow, Mike with the sick burn. Let me see what I have in my toolbox. Oh, it's right here. Excuse me one moment. I dropped my water bottle. All right, so we got a toolbox. Let's see. Yeah, I have a leopard disc. I may try that too. Trying to see if it had any IDE stuff in here. I don't think I do. No, uh, that's all. I got a couple, I got a sled in here, but it's SATA. All right, so let's do a couple of things. Let me go get my Leopard disc. That's the latest, that's the last OS this machine will run. Let's try to boot from that. Uh, maybe it's an issue with the Tiger installer. Let's find out. And get my Leopard disc here. Ooh, OS 9. I'll try OS 9 as well. Let's just try some more stuff. All right. Installer has to see the, dr the drive to format the drive. All right, so let's do, let's do this. This is frozen, so. Let me try Leopard. Does the machine need the old utility to force it to see an SSD? This gen does support OS 9. It's the last laptop that would boot it. Let's see. Let's do a little Googling search. Hmm. Oh yeah, my installer is 921, so it won't install. This is probably 922. It's a very good point. Something I'd forgotten years ago. I really need you to eject this disk, laptop. See what's in my leopard. Got my leopard DVD. Oh, a couple of Apple stickers. Yeah, I held down the mouse button. It didn't um, do it. Does this support target disk mode? It does. Let me just try the full installer though, real quick. Sorry, I put that in your way. And the system sees it in system profiler, so. It may be, um, it may be that Tiger version 10.4.0 doesn't like it for some reason. And now I'm spinning again. It's going well. Target disk mode. I could format it that way. That may be the way to go. Wow, 
Wow. This is, I feel like I'm never going to hear the end of this, am I? All right, I'm going to blame Tiger for this. Let's try Leopard. If Leopard doesn't work, we'll try Target Disc Mode. Hold down the mouse button so it ejects. Yeah, I could try the command line. Free me. Eject my sweet tiger disc, please. There we go. All right, so let's put tiger away. All this tiger stuff back up. This is kind of how it goes with old machines sometimes. Doesn't go as planned. Also, a panther. We could also put a panther on it. But leopard is the newest, obviously. So we're going to give that a shot. Compare this to the experience of reinstalling the OS on the new MacBook Air. That was also a nightmare. Obviously, uh, that's not going to work because this is a power PC, but I do have Leopard. It's got Apple stickers, Leopard install DVD, and uh, a little Leopard book we can look at together. So let's do this. Uh, I kind of started my genius -y times with Leopard, and it was a dual-layer DVD. And people would come in saying, oh, my optical drive, you know, I put Leopard in, my optical drive broke. Well, because it was like dual-layer, it really stressed optical drives, and we replaced a lot of them. This is now an unboxing channel from the past. It's true. All right, so let's see what this does. Does Snow Leopard have a book? Let's see. Um, well, Snow Leopard didn't really have any features, so it's just, oh, you can't see that. So it's just this. And then how to install it, expose, Safari 4, QuickTime 10, and Microsoft Exchange support, which was basically as good as it got with Snow Leopard. That was basically everything. Put Snow Leopard away. All right, trying to boot off this DVD. Does anyone know offhand what that Apple font is? What, this? Um, yeah, Myriad Pro, probably. All right, here we go. Use English for the main language. So let's just continue. I agree. There it is. There's the SSD. So I'm going to install Mac OS 10. I'm going to customize this because I don't need printer drivers or language translations. All right, yes, so we are installing Leopard. I'm just going to check the installation DVD. I'm going to skip that. Oh, I kind of themed. I got some purple back there. I got purple here. That's fun. 
So let's read about Leopard, because that's going to take a while. All right. Welcome to Leopard. Install Leopard. Here, I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Install Leopard. Talks about the installation. Chapter 2. Meet Leopard. Ah, uh, yes, this is where Stack showed up. Look at that sweet, glassy dock. Shows you how to uh, customize everything. And Leopard was where they unified the UI. So no more brushed metal and using all that sort of gray universal look. Spotlight, screen sharing. Uh, we also got Quick Look, which I don't know about y'all, but I use Quick Look all the time. Ooh, Time Machine. Automatically back up your Mac. If you're missing a document, travel back in time to recover it. That's what the cool uh, background Time Machine used to have. Recover files, set preferences. Also got spaces in Leopard, which are now just horizontal in Mission Control. So you had to customize spaces. Uh, Apple Mail, mmm. Let me read you some of the things in Mail. Stationary, when you create a message, select stationary to give it the perfect style. Whether the occasion is fun or formal, including photos is easy using the photo browser. Did anybody use this besides Steve Jobs? I hope not. Notes and to-dos. Keep all of your notes and to-do items in one place. Jot down reminders, shopping lists, and information you need. Ah, that's where early versions of iPhone OS, I think, synced its notes. Uh, iChat AV, photo booth, dashboard. Create your own widget from any part of a web page and see its updates. So you could use web clip. Sorry, I keep turning that backwards. And you could like pull a section off the web page. So you could like maybe get that left hand sidebar on relay site and see what the most uh, current podcast was. Parental controls, logging, photo booth. Discover more ways to have fun with your new types of snapshots. Now, of course, with uh, this laptop, you would need a camera like this, EyeSight camera. And it would, it came with a bunch of different mounts and so you would have it mounted up here. And it had an iris, so you could open and close it there. Like a physically ice, physically opening and closing iris, and then Firewire 400. So if you were like a, you know, power user or whatever, you would have this uh, setup. There were several mounts on this, like uh, Thomas said. There's some that clipped on, some that glued on, like on the back of an uh, iMac G4, or the top of an eMac. But uh, yeah, the eyesight is. Um, the eyesight is really cool. Like, I love this industrial design. There was a uh, blog post earlier this year where someone took the guts of this and put a Raspberry Pi camera in it, which was really cool. Can you imagine the camera they could put in that now? It would be awesome. All right, still installing. So, uh, also included front row. So it turned your Mac into kind of an Apple TV. In fact, the original Apple T TV UI looked a lot like this. And you could use the Apple remote. Now this laptop wouldn't have, I don't think it's gonna install front row for me. 
uh, or if it does, I don't think it will, but if it does, it, you wouldn't be able to use it with the remote because there's no IR port on the front. I think, if I remember correctly, that it wouldn't install from, um, it wouldn't install on machines it couldn't run on. And then boot camp. To use Windows application on your Mac, install boot camp and your copy of Windows. Again, not on a G4. Shows you how to install Windows. And then it's got some support stuff in the back. And then again, some Apple stickers. Well, this has got 45 minutes left to install. This install is no really not any faster than it would have been on a hard drive, probably because of the optical drive, but I'm very curious to see how it runs. My sort of general rule on these older machines is to match the OS with the processor. So like 10.3 you know, on a G3, Tiger on a G4, Leopard on a G5. Uh, but this machine will run Leopard probably better than ever because of this SSD, but it was a little slow in, uh, in terms of running Leopard on the spinning hard drive when, uh, when that was here. So you can see that it is installing with about 45 minutes left. Gonna come right along. This is where I realized I should have had like a, a show and tell <laughs> during the install, but I didn't think about that. Um, so yeah, so we're just gonna let this run for a little while. Are we installing XP at the same time tomorrow? No! Stream with someone updating a similar vintage Dell. Is that charging cable in the back? Uh, yes, it is. So I don't want to pick it up, but all of the I.O. on the Titanium PowerBook is in the back. And so there's a door that flips down. You can kind of see it. And all the I.O. is across the back. Which is really cool, like, because you can just have it at your desk and, like, have your cables nice and neat and then just plug it all in in the back. Um, really pretty cool. And now, of course, we don't have any ports, so it doesn't matter. And, of course, the old-style charger was orange when it's charging and then green when it's charged. So the battery's at 12%, but like I said, this battery's basically depleted because of its age. The bezels are very thin. I mean, compared to current machines, like this is wild how thin, how thin these are. Um, and the display, to Sean's point, would go very far back. I'm not going to do that because these cinders are fragile. And I don't want to, I don't want to break this machine. But yes, the, the display would go way far back. I mean, you can see, like, that's a hinge, that's a hinge. You can actually, I mean, if I take this OS 9 disc, like, I mean, you can get stuff in between there in that gap. So when they went to the aluminum ones, they built them like the iBooks, with a long hinge in the middle, and the screen sort of rotated back and away. I was trying to see if I could reach an aluminum power book, but I, um, it's too high for me to reach. I'm not supposed to climb on anything with, uh, in my boot for my foot. So you can see my crutches there. Still using crutches some, walking around some on my own, but I'm definitely not gonna climb on a chair to get an aluminum power book down. All right, 27 minutes. All right, so we're rocking and rolling now. So what about y'all? What was a, an early Mac notebook that some of y'all used? Do you have one that really captures your heart? Like I love the titanium because I spent so much time with it. I love the way it looks. I love that it's flawed in a way. And I'm curious, like, is there anything, any Mac, maybe your first Mac or one now that just like really does that to you? Yeah, the PowerBook G3. There's a whole line of those, right? The PowerBook G3 really saw a big transition in I.O. from like serial and SCSI type stuff uh, all the way through FireWire with the Pismo. Yep, G3 had the upside down logo. This is the, the first Mac that put the logo right side up on the back. 12 inch PowerBook, that is definitely, definitely a crowd pleaser. Again, mine's too high to reach. I keep looking back there. I mean, you can see my, that's my 12 inch power book right there on top. Really, really cool. iBook G4, yeah, that was my wife's first Mac. Uh, I bought in college, um, I got her a 12 inch, 
iBoat G4 and called Tiny. And we still have Tiny. Tiny's up there. And uh, she lugged that thing around forever. Yeah, black MacBook. Pre-unibody MacBook Pro was great too. They were very similar to the aluminum power book, but it was a great design. It really was. First iMac G5 with the whole back came off. Also really cool. I took one of those apart here on the channel about a month ago. That may still be up for video on demand or it may have rolled off now, but very easy to get into, which was good because they had capacitor failures and you had to repair them a lot. It's also wild they got a G5 into that thing. All right, 17 minutes left. We're cooking with gas now. The, uh, this installer, Leopard in particular, the installer I seem to remember was pretty bad at telling time. First product was an E-Mate. Very cool. I've got an E-Mate. I can reach that. Let's see. So E-Mate ran Newton OS. And looked, I'm trying to find the right view here, you know, looked like a laptop basically. They sold them to schools in packs. You couldn't even buy them individually. And of course, it ran on ARM, so kind of the OG ARM laptop. That's a good joke. Yeah, Mac Mini. Um, I saw a question. I don't know. If you ask me a question, ask it again because it scrolled off my screen. 25 megahertz. Our household computer was the iMac G4. Yeah, classic. I got one back there. Really love them. Pre-MacBook era, what line of Apple computer was your favorite? I mean, my first real experience with a Mac that was my own was a titanium. But, you know, the iMac I really loved in high school. We used iMac G3s at the high school newspaper. Eventually got an iMac G4. So I think the iMac for me is a, a strong contender. And I think if you want a desktop, it's totally the default. It's totally the way to go. Put my e made up. All right, 14 minutes. First Mac Mini, super slow. Yeah, they, the G4 was a little rough. And uh, then they went to Core Solo, which was also rough. But eventually the Mac Minis really came into their own as far as power, which is good. Unibody Plastic MacBook. Bold choice. Bold, bold choice. It was plastic injected unibody, white. The whole bottom of it was a big rubber foot. Uh, they're a weird machine, but they ran, I don't know where they got dropped. I did a video on it years ago, getting, I think, Sierra on it. I think it was the last OS that it supported. Um, now, the eMac was shaped like an iMac G3, but it was really, um, it was bigger because it had a bigger display. So let's see. Um, Emac G4. Found a picture for y'all of the Emac. Here we go. Yeah, so this is a. So that is an Emac. You can kind of see that there. So it took the Emac G3 design, put a bigger display in it, put a G4 in it, put a fan in the back. That's what that venting is in the back. Uh, no, the plastic unibody was just in white. So the MacBook started life as a white plastic and black plastic notebook. And then they went unibody plastic and there was a unibody aluminum one. And then eventually it just became the 13-inch MacBook Pro and they sort of phased it out. Yeah, there was a rumor last week, I think, that Apple was looking at some sort of matte black finish for its notebooks. I think it'd be super cool as long as it didn't attract a lot of finger grease. That's kind of my problem. Um, kind of my problem with even like some of the space gray stuff where it just shows fingerprints really badly. Uh, have you ever tried the Matias Tactile Pro Keyboard? Yes, so I used to type years and years ago on an Apple Extended 2, but I had some nerve damage in my right arm. I had surgery, I got a, a big scar. You can kind of see it there. Um, they repaired that nerve damage and ever since then typing on a 
a long throw mechanical keyboard at least, like the Alp switches, just is not very comfortable to my to my hand and arm. So I have tried the Tactile Pro. In fact, I tried it a couple of years ago and I couldn't do it. So, um, you know, I use the Magic keyboard at my desk and I'm happy with it. I have the Raspberry Pi keyboard here at the PC and I'm happy with it. I did order a Keychron with the I kept calling them laser switches, and Mike said that wasn't right, but the optical switches on their recent Kickstarter, I'm going to try that at least over here for the streaming setup. Yeah, I gave up on Space Gray MacBooks, kind of for the same reason, to show you how greasy you are. And I, just, I like silver, so my... Um, I did Space Gray, I guess, on my 2016, but since then I've done silver. Hey, how's your foot? Thank you for asking. Healing very nicely, so I've been clear to start walking on it. I'm still in a boot. Um, almost to my knee, but I can take it off to sleep and, and, you know, shower and stuff. But if I'm up and moving, I need the boot on. And I've been clear to start walking on it, so I'm using my crutches a good bit still, like, to the house and back, but, like, in the office or in the house, I'm starting to, um, starting to walk on it a little bit in the boot. And it's going okay. Some days are better than others. The Power Mac G3 on one is the one I was thinking of. Yes, you can't see it. I have one just just off screen. Uh, it was an edge. It was an education machine, and it was a G3. It was kind of the the precursor to the iMac, if you will. Yeah, here's a picture of it um, that I took. I wrote I wrote on Mac Stories. So it looks like a tooth, kind of, if you can see that. Uh, they're pretty hard to come by because they're education only. It's the back and the top. It looks like a tooth on top, also kind of like a kind of like a butt. So you can see the I.O. there, floppy zip and CD, and a headphone jack on each side because these were, they were made for schools, and the idea is, I guess, that two students would sit in front of one. The iMac G3 also had two headphone jacks, and some of the performers and stuff did, too. I think they're kind of cool. I mean, I've got one. I mentioned in my high school paper a minute ago where we had the IMAX. We also had a Molar Mac. And I looked for one for years. Mine doesn't work. Um, but I was willing to have it just to have the, just to have one uh, in the collection. And it is super, like, it is so much heavier than anything else. Is the bottom part is all metal with a logic board and the expansion cards go in. It all slides out and it's just like in this steel box. Gosh, I feel old now. It does look like one of those. 2020 has aged everybody. Seven minutes left. Ah, oh, there were the teacher's computer and the student computer's iMac G3s. And in my elementary school, in first grade, I think, there was an Apple II still. But then it was a bunch of Macs, like beige performas and stuff. David Sparks is the coolest person you know, yes or yes. I'll go with that. Timbo Slice. We learned how to program basic on the Apple II in fifth grade. Yeah, I mean, I missed that era by a little bit, but I know a lot of people older than me, the Apple II is like the reason they're in technology. Like a lot of programmers I know, a lot of people at Apple, a lot of indies, they do this stuff now because of the Apple II. They got one at home or used one at school, learned to program on it and just got hooked. Uh, the Apple II's legacy really lives on today in those people's careers, I think. And the Macintosh eventually, you know, killed it. But it took a long time to die. The Apple II stuck around for a long time. Oh, sorry, I bumped that picture. I remember some sort of laser clone in school. I don't know. My elementary school did have a laser disc player. Remember those carts with like the TV on top of them? And when the laser disc player came out, we knew that it was a day we we're going to watch movies in class. And it was awesome. All right, let's check on this. Uh, so it's coming right along. About five minutes left. Oh, I love the Back to the Future plates behind you. Thank you. Those were a Christmas present for my mom a few years ago. So it's the out of time and then the one from the future in front of it. I thought it was a pretty cool Christmas gift. I really like those. Yeah, so not many Macs in India growing up. Did I mean, uh, 
you know, what computers were in education or were there. I'd love to know about that. You know, Apple really was strong in education here in the U.S. and some in Europe, but not as not as uh, in depth as they had like in the 80s and 90s here in the U.S. It really was education and then desktop publishing is what kept the Mac going. Four minutes remaining. Well, we get to hear the Leopard song. That'll be fun. I've got a video on my YouTube channel where I stripped out all the welcome videos of all these installers and you can watch them all back to back. It's pretty fun. People always comment like, I can't believe they got rid of this. Steve Jobs rolling in his grave. It's like, well, no, he, he was there when they got rid of it. It's fine. Yeah, just old HP computers. Okay. Yeah, that's what I used at home growing up was a Hewlett Packard. No, it was a Packard Bell. And uh, it was terrible. What is this room you're actually in designed as? Okay, so uh, I have answered this before, but I'm happy to answer it again. This is a standalone building. So my house is built in the 50s. We have a standalone garage. This is a standalone building behind it. This is my wife's grandparents' house. We bought it from her grandmother before she passed. And she had built this in the 70s as just like a storage area. And some of her boys were into like, you know, gunsmithing and stuff. So it was just like a extra space on the property. And then when we bought the house however long ago, we renovated it into the studio. So it is um, now just my space. But we, it was it's a concrete block building. So we cleaned everything real good, reinforced stuff, uh, had to repair some of the roof, and then we put these walls in. So it's cinder block, and then framing strapped to that, and then insulation, and then drywall. And on this wall, because the garage is right there, and the air conditioning to the house is in between me and the garage, uh, there's double drywall on this wall to help with the sound as well. Do I have any pets? Yes, we have a dog named Eva Corndog, and uh, the kids also have a corn snake. The band who made it into the Leopard Intro weren't a band anymore. That's sad. I used to hear these songs so much, like I just, especially Tiger, because Tiger was around a really long time. Leopard, Leopard is weird. If you go back, they introduced it at two different WBDCs, I think 2006 and 2007, and it didn't ship until late, late 2007, because they, uh, and Apple said as, said as much, they pulled engineers off of the, uh, off of the, Mac OS 10 program and put them on the iPhone to finish that. And so Leopard came out late. So Tiger was, I think, the longest release of Mac OS 10 in terms of time. And it oversaw um, the transition to Intel. So Tiger ran on PowerPC and Intel, uh, the different versions of it. And then this Leopard was universal. I'm going to phone call the telemarketer. Hang up. All right, let's go back to this. It's almost done, about a minute left. Of course, it's probably, that last minute's probably gonna take a long time, but that's how it goes. What app should I install? I don't know, whatever you need. Almost done. About a minute. It's the greatest computer lie ever told. The classic Mac OS uh, was also really bad at telling time, and sometimes the bar would actually move backwards to try to be more accurate. It was really depressing. Install Office if you need it. iWork. Adium, so you can chat on Instant Messenger. Apple Work 6. I used Adium a lot on my old titanium. In college, how you kept up with people was AIM. So I started college in 2004. So it was AIM and then, um, you know, eventually text messages and stuff. What app do you listen to podcasts with? I use Overcast personally. But I keep all of them on my phone just to make sure all the relay stuff is behaving. Can you get Chrome on this? No. Uh, there are some 
browser projects that do bring like more modern WebKit to PowerPC though, uh, or like Firefox builds. Uh, 104 Fox, I think, is one of them if it's still around. All right, your computer will restart to complete the installation. Why don't you use Spark email like Mike? I he uses it with our sales manager, and I'm not in the sales process very much, and so they use it. He hasn't made me use it. All right. So it is rebooting after the Leopard install. Get my microphone out so we can so we can hear that music. It will be the fastest booting titanium power book of all time. Here we go. that part really well. I am in the United States. Do not transfer my information. It is not going to get on this network, I don't think. Let's see. I'm gonna tell it my computer does not connect to the internet. I'm gonna skip my registration process. I'm gonna create an account. I am in the United States, Chicago time zone. It's not 2008, that's for sure. So it's 12, 17, 2020. And it is 12, what? Killing me smalls. I'm just going to leave the time alone because I clicked on the time and went back to Unix uh, epoch time. Okay. There it is. Sweet, sweet leopard. I'm going to eject the disk. Let's see how fast this is it some things. All right, so get rid of our Leopard installer. So let's um, go to applications and let's open a bunch of stuff. No beach ball yet. There's chess.
There's font book. Oh yeah, we had quite a few apps open. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Oh, I think we have to use photo booth, right? Let me get a fire. Uh, let me get a fireware cable. I happen to have one right here. At least I think I do. I do have a firewire cable. Oh, there's, oh, I do have front row. Look at that. Uh, it's uh, pretty angry. It has a gigabyte of RAM. One gigahertz G4, one gigabyte of RAM. Uh, I just have a little shorty firewire cable, but it'll work. So now I can show you all the ports. Someone asked about this earlier. So we have modem, uh, audio in, S video out, DVI out, two USB, ethernet, and one Firewire 400. And the headphone jack is over here on the side. So you see this lights up green. All right, so now let's quit some of these applications and go into photo booth. All right, let me quit some of these things. I gotta say, it feels pretty responsive. I mean, it's indexing spotlight right now. That's why the fans are going. Um, and it is just a gigahertz G4, but it, it feels pretty good. All right, let me quit iChat. So we got photo booth going. Let me turn this where you can see it. So you can see you. That's your camera right there. There I am. Now the video card on this is pretty wimpy, but we can see, we'll see what it'll do. Yeah, it's pretty, and I really blame Spotlight indexing for this and the video card. Um, I mean, it launched apps way faster than I thought it would. I guess it's not going to let me go to an effect. Oh, I don't think it did in full screen. Maybe that's what it was. Anyways, that's, uh, there we go. Oh, come on. Take my picture. Well, I tried. Yeah, that's how you would, uh, that's how you'd roll back in the day. So anyways, that's a Titanium PowerBook G4 with a uh, SSD in it. You can hear those fans. Quit photo booth. Wow. There we go. There it is. We got dashboard here. I can go in here and I can add widgets. So say I want, uh, whoa. I don't know what I've done to hit front row. Um, say I want this. And you see I don't get the ripple effect because the, this GPU didn't support it. So I think that is, uh, I think that's about it. Thanks for joining me. This was a lot of fun. Um, I want to do more of these sort of like hardware projects. So let me know maybe what you'd like to see. Hit me up on Twitter. Uh, if you haven't followed the Twitch channel, now is the time. Uh, be sure to do that. Um, and uh, yeah, I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. I should be back sometime next week. And um, 
Hope you all have a good weekend. Stay safe out there, at least here in the U.S. Things are really out of control, so please, uh, please stay safe, and uh, we'll talk soon. See you all.